G'day, welcome to Hogs, Cogs and Two Aussie Flogs, the greatest podcast this side of Mount Buffalo. Ah, Mount Buffalo, mate. <laughs> what a good time we was had last weekend up at the Brighter Days Festival. It was fantastic. We had a great old time up there, mate. Yep, no, it was... Uh, look, it's always one of the, 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 the best times of the year, uh, but best weekends of the year for, 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 motor, for, yeah, yeah. for motorbikes and all that sort of stuff. I thought this year was maybe down on numbers. Definitely down on numbers this year, mate. Um, I think that might have had a lot to do with the the expected hot weather. That yeah, we got, you know, because it was like it was bloody hot. Yeah, the was, whole time it was bloody hot. In fact, we got most of our riding done during the day because in the of morning. That. So we get up, uh, get yeah. up, well for us early. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and go for it. But geez, was there some good riding? Yeah, as always, there's always good riding around there, mate. And yeah. uh, this year didn't disappoint. No, and look, if you haven't been to up to Brighter Days, well, if you haven't been up to Brighter Days, you, you, you need to get up there. Um, the only thing I would say is if you're going to go, look at booking now because it books out pretty fast up there. They get a lot of people yes. up there. Um, that, well, that was the thing that surprised me because everybody books so far in advance and the whole thing's booked out, but then we got there and there were just... Wasn't as many people as normal, mate. No. I, I, I don't know what was going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think probably... Two things. Two, two, I reckon the weather was definitely a, a, yeah. a factor, um, and I think also that maybe since um, they've moved it out to the showgrounds, numbers yeah, have dropped off. That's the third year it's been out to the showgrounds. I think, look, I think the cost might be up. I mean, yeah. look, it's like one hundred and eighty-five bucks for a ticket to go to the concert. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, but you know, like you're getting, you know. you're getting. 185 bucks. It, that's, you're getting three days. You're getting, exactly. So three days are pretty. It's still pretty good value. Top quality uh, yeah, good bands. En- entertainment. Good band. Um, good. Speaking of that, now Lisa with, with, did did she the. Did. Uh, well, she went to every day of the, every every day of the bands, mate. She left me alone, and uh, off she went to see the bands, and uh, she's got a little bit of a report for us, mate. So over to Lisa. So guys, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Brighter Day Festival that I attended over the long weekend up at Bright. Now, it is a great weekend, if you haven't been, to attend these bands that are play over the three days. So it's $185 to enter for the three days. Uh, you can get a little bit cheaper if you buy, purchase it the year prior once they open, but otherwise it's $185. For that, you get entertainment all three days throughout the day. The main bands start roughly about five o'clock. So Friday night, it started with Chocolate Starfish, followed by Kate Soprano, and they absolutely blew the roof off, even though it's, you know, at an oval, but it was sensational. It left everybody on such a buzz. Okay, so the following night was uh, Russell Morris, followed by Road Traders. Uh, they, were, they were both very good bands, but the night before was just so sensational uh, that it was very hard act to follow. But Sunday night, we had Ross Wilson. Um, we also had Boom Crash Offer, and it was closed by Screaming Eagles. Well, they just bought the house down and it was such a fantastic atmosphere that they actually continued to play even after cutoff. So look, if you're looking at coming down to brighter days, I would highly suggest purchasing tickets and going to the bands. You will not be disappointed. They do have food trucks there, so you can purchase lunch or dinner. There's quite a variety. Small merchant bands, maybe five or six different um, vans to buy merchandise like signs and belts, buckles, hats, etc. And they do have a merchandise stand where you can buy brighter day t-shirts and the like. And look, the money goes towards a fantastic cause. So it is certainly well worth attending. So hopefully I'll see you there next year. Okay, back to the guys in the studio. So she had a good time, mate. Yeah, so they, everybody that went and saw it, and again, as always, um, Screaming Eagles finished yeah. off the night. And look, the Screamers always do a great job. And, uh, and one of our own flogs, Chop, yeah, was, was heavily involved. Oh, no, he was heavily, heavily involved in. He was heavily involved <laughs> and, with uh, catching. Well, Kate, 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 Kate Sobrano fell for him. Yes, like literally. <laughs> literally, she uh, fell into his arms. She did. And, so, I mean, she's only human. She was she. 
she leaned over and grabbed his phone, yep. which, which was quite hilarious because he was up the front video t- videoing it uh, for his channel's Chops Journey, and um, she videoed, and then when she went to hand it back, she literally fell off the stage yeah. and landed on the metal bloody <laughs> gate right in front. And, and without, luckily, Chop was there, mate, because yeah. he probably saved her from breaking her ribs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, hope Kate's all right, but uh, she, she kicked on. So I'll tell you what, it made Chop's night, though. Oh, Actually, he, made his weekend. It, it, well, it made all our weekend. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, there were some funny jokes about that one. So, <laughs> some of those we'll just have to keep to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really, really good... Uh, it's always, oh, I just love it up there. That, that whole area is just it's spectacular. Well, to me, it's all about the riding, mate. Yep. I mean, pretty much the best roads... Well, maybe not the best... The best riding... Roads, you know, you know, you've got the uh, Great Alpine Way, yep, yep. which goes up over Mount Hoff. And now the sad thing is, is because they've got some stupid bike push bike race on, you can't you can't hit Mount Hoff until mm. Tuesday. Um, so I know Chop went back home to Sydney via Mount Hoff. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure which way he went, but it was a long way. Yep. Um, and me and the tail gunner, we went home via. Uh, uh, Tawonga Gap down to Mount Beauty and up through Falls Creek and I'll talk about that a little bit later yep. but uh, all that area we went out to Yak and Dander yes uh, for breakfast on sa- uh, Saturday Friday Saturday I don't know Saturday, God, Saturday. every day is a bloody blur yeah, yeah. I, I told, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what the last six weeks have been a bloody blur. Like, just been <laughs> holy Toledo, folks. Ever since we left to New Zealand and got back, and then everything's been going. And it doesn't stop there, mate. We've talk, got plenty more happening. Talk about getting off the couch, holy <laughs> Toledo. Um, so, if you haven't been to Bright, if you haven't, haven't been to the actual Bright Days event, so we, we always start off with a, with, with a great ride up. Yep. And this was this year was well, no this, exception. This year we stopped at the. Um, Mountain View Hotel. Mountain View Hotel, which was down in Whitfield. Whitfield, which is just over. You go over down, over to uh, Mansfield, yep. and then over the top of the hills, drop down into Whitfield, and uh, it's right there at the Tina section. And geez, they looked after us, didn't they? They were fantastic. That's, a, that's not a bad little spot. It's a mate. ripper, little, and it's a there. ripper pub. Great, yeah. great customer service and food was fantastic. Yep. And the ride in is always good. I mean, they have reduced to eighty k's an hour. Not well, that's how we that's how we make roads safe for Victoria, mate. We just drop the speed limit down. Yeah, and we were very careful to make to, to stick that speed limit the whole way along. It was really 100%. good. Percent was really good. I, I, I don't recall seeing my speedo go any further <laughs> faster than that, mate. Yep, um, that would have been wrong. And we had a whole bunch of guys along with us, which which made the, the ride great. I think we had. Uh, many, fifteen of us. Fifteen of us went yeah. to the pub. So that yeah. was that was really yeah. good. Uh, and then we had more people come on board when we when we actually got to Bright. Yep. Um, and yeah, we and literally we had flogs from everywhere come in. We had guys from Achuca. We had guys from uh, you know over this way, Tarnie, Werribee, uh, uh, over our side, uh, um, southeastern south suburbs. Eastern suburbs. Man, uh, shop come down from Sydney. Shop come down from uh, Sydney. I tell you what, him and Chris. Absolute sensational, mate. We had a ball with them, and uh, they stayed with us for the first time. And uh, Chop's running a uh, charity event, and we'll put a flyer up for that now. Yep. So if you're in Sydney or in the Sydney area uh, in a couple of weeks' time, get on get board along. with that one because, uh, you know, he runs that all by him. You know, the two of them run it all by themselves, and it all goes to a good Can charity. I say, a yeah. nicer couple you will not meet. Oh, no, don't tell him that. No, nah, look. It'll go that, straight to his head. Yeah, no, nah, they, they were fantastic. <laughs> um, and uh, if you haven't got into his channel, Chop's Journey, uh, we'll put a link in the yeah, show, in the show notes, notes as well. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but Lots of fun. Just, just great people. Anyway, yeah. getting back to the actual event. Um, so that, yeah, so we did that, then we rode in th- uh, along through, through Millawa, Link onto the Great Alpine Way, and then you're into um, in, in, into Brighton and, and our yeah. accommodation. The accommodation was fantastic, uh, as it always yeah, is. Yep. Yeah. Well, we stayed at the Alpine Sports and Recreation Centre, which is uh, owned by a mate of mine. Yep. And uh, he looks after us every year. So every year we book the whole thing out, and we uh, we had a good time this it was time, good, yeah. mate. It, it was was, uh, was really good. It was perfect for yeah. everybody. I yeah, think everybody good. that stayed there had a good time. It's uh, we've got a you know, bit of security putting the bikes around the back. Yep. And uh, all apart from the lawnmower on the, uh, I think it was the second last oh, day, that started at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, oh, that was on the Monday. It was on the Monday, yes. <laughs> I thought, shit, those bikes are making an awful lot of noise this morning. And they all sound the exact same. And it ended up being a lawnmower. Uh, <laughs> right outside my window right. it started to. Well, it could have been worse. It could have been outside your window. That's exactly yeah. right, mate. Um, so, there, yeah, so, that, so that's the that's the Friday. And Friday night, they got the, the bands on Friday, start Friday afternoon, Friday night. Yeah. 
Um, then on the Saturday, it's always the poker run. Um, and uh, it's a Cooper card run, isn't Cooper, it? Yeah, the Cooper card Cooper, run. Cooper card so run. So most of the boys went off and did the Cooper card run, yeah. which was, uh, well, it was a bit unusual this year, mate, because they actually had an off. Yeah. They slowed down for a bridge and someone didn't. And he... Uh, Liberacci'd someone. Yeah, and the and next minute there's two bikes in the paddock and one bloke in the creek. Yeah, and we, our very own Johnny Ackle was right behind it. Yep. And sort of, I haven't got shook him up a little bit because the, mm. the bloke, one of the blokes, the guy that got hit was pretty badly injured. Mm. Um, his bike shot off into the paddock about 150 metres. The other bloke that hit him mm. went over. The only thing I would say, guys, if you're riding in those big groups, just slow down. Yeah. I don't know. It's not they, a race. They, they just. I had this the other day on the. Uh, Black Dog Run, there's always one, mate. There's always one who thinks it's a dick swinging exercise, yeah. mate, and has to ride like, you know, like he's uh, in the Me. movie Stone or something. Yeah. He's just, it's a bloody charity ride. Yeah. It's not meant to be a bloody Grand Prix. No. You know, and for someone to be so basically considerate that they end up running up someone's ass and writing off two bikes and sending two people to the hospital simply because they were showing off. And that's the only thing it can be, I'm sorry. Or not or not concentrating. Or not concentrating. Yeah. It, both as bad as each other. Yep. Uh, I don't know, mate. Just yeah. push it, put, you know, because apart from that, apparently it was a fantastic... Fantastic, you know, right. Yeah, what, 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 what actually happened, we actually went past it the next day to see what happened. The, yeah. The, so where it is, it goes from a... And it's a back road. It's not a main road. So it's a back road. that yeah. goes into a, a narrow one-lane bridge. So obviously everybody's... A bit of, it's down. a bit of a choke point to be slowed down. And one guy's just come barreling up and just bang, yeah. clean, cleaned him up. Luckily, he only cleaned up him and himself and the other bloke. Really, yeah. could have been more yeah. people yeah. were hurt. Could but have been uh, a shocker. Uh, yeah, like I said, so that's um, sad. But yeah. uh, it shouldn't detract from the event because the Cooper car runs bloody sensational. No, and, and what? Well, look, we we didn't do that. Look. Uh, this year, I didn't do a lot of the events because of the fact I've done it. We've done, we've both done it to death. Yeah, we've done a, yeah. a lot of them. Um, and uh, so, we, uh, at, in, on that morning, we went across to Yak, Yak and Danda. We went to uh, Gum Tree Pies. Yeah. Yes. Well, now, now we, the, we didn't really have a choice, did we? No. The, the Bakery Queen. She's a bit under the weather at the moment. She's she's crook, so she would have been normally here uh, talking about it. But geez, they were nice pies. They were at, nice pies, mate. Uh, if you they haven't been up to uh, Gum Tree Pies, give give them a, yeah. a, a shout out. And, but Yak and Dander itself. Oh, mate, it's what a beautiful, a great little town. It's a beautiful little town. Great little town, and it's a nice little run in there. Yep, it is. Uh, from Myrtleford. Yeah, Myrtleford. Myrtleford. You go, yeah. go, go to Myrtleford and, yeah. and, and and shoot in from that way. Um, it's not it's not it's not a big ride, but it's it, nah. it's, it's a fun ride. And then we came back. through through uh, Beechworth, back into Myrtleford, and, and back back, back home, home to Bright. And uh, by that time of day, mate, by about by, by two o'clock, that oh, was the just whole weekend, hot. it was just bloody hot, and it was time for a cold refresher. Yep. And and, uh, yeah, and I thought we did that quite well. And we, we had a barbecue that night. We did Saturday night. We had a big barbecue. A few people come over yep. and. Uh, as we, we said, we invited anyone who was up there to come over, so we had a few come over, and it was uh, lots of fun. No, it was a, it was a, it was a great night. You, you, can't, you can't complain about... That area, to me, is the best area to ride. Yeah, I love the Great Ocean Road, Yeah, but really, you can't beat the, the high country to no, ride in. it's and, brilliant. Uh, you know, it was just it was just a ripper weekend, mate. And, and, then, and then the next morning, we went up to Mount... Uh, Buffalo or Mount Buffalo? Buffalo. Um, and that is always a great ride up there. Apart from, I don't, I don't want to sound like a winger, but the, there's, there's some push bike riders going up there, and the the urge, the <laughs> urge was. I don't know why they feel the need to in, in every corner to be right where you need to be, two meters off the freaking edge of the road. Yeah. Like it, it's just. I don't Mate, know. you're being too nice. Dickheads, get off the road. Yeah, I just think there's... I'm, I'm over them, mate. Every I've, time, every... Oh, I love a good hairpin. Yeah. And, like, you got a push bike right in bloody f- two and a half feet into the road. Yeah. You know. I, un- I understand... I don't think bikes should be allowed on those sorts of roads. Yeah, I, I just think it's too narrow to have yeah. to have pushies on there. Like, yeah. it's just... And then, of course, you're supposed to be a... You know, a metre off there. An- another genius law from Victoria, a yeah. metre away from the pillocks. And uh, which would put you on the wrong side of the road, quite yeah. frankly, or you just sit at push bike speed the whole way up a bloody mountain. I mean, it's just ludicrous. Yeah, but yeah, look, yeah, anyway, that, that's my grumble. Yeah, uh, but it is. It is. If, if you haven't done it, um, 
Mount Buffalo is great. It's, it's, it's a, a good run. It's and good once run. you get up the top, the views are well, just. I, I led the right arm. I'm going to tell you, I haven't had so much fun. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. It really yeah. was. And then on the way down, I did the opposite. I went to the back, and, and uh, you led. Yeah, I mean, and you and uh, Johnny. No, oh, no, no chop. Chop. Yeah. Had a bit of fun coming yeah. down. Yeah. Chop can ride, mate. He can ride. He can ride. So we had a, we had a lot of fun with him going up and coming back. Yep. So then, we had, then we just went into Happy Valley, had a bit of lunch at Happy Valley. Happy Valley pub, mate. Great pub. What a great little pub. And I didn't know it had the out, out the back. Yeah. And what was it, 20 bucks a meal or 20 something? bucks a meal. And it was a feed too. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was... Pretty happy with that. Yeah. Uh, the, look, I've, I've been going to Happy Valley for quite a while, and Lindy, who... You don't need to tell me about your love life, mate. And Lindy, who, uh, who's, who, who runs the pub, she's... A, Always looks after us there. Look, if you're in the area, call in, say hello because it's a it's a it's a rip so It's spot. about halfway between Middleford and, and Bright. Bright, yeah. Or you know, Middleford and Paul Punker, I yeah. would say. And uh, it's, it's in ovens, actually, is where it is. Ovens. Yeah. Well, their ovens were working well. Mate, yes, they were. Because the very, food was ripper. It was very nice. Absolutely ripper. So that was that day. Yep. Uh, again, about two o'clock, two thirty, we ended up back at the uh, back at the uh, boudoir. Yeah. And, uh, and then we did the next day. Was it was a if, if you haven't done this right, you got to do this. We go you go head across the Mitter pub. Oh, it it's is my favourite little pub. It, it's a ripper pub. It is. The road we went the, this time we went uh, went we took the river road um, from uh, where did we go from through from uh, we went over Tawonga Gap. Um, left at the bottom of the Tawonga left, Gap. Left at the bottom of the Tawonga Gap. Uh, you cross across the creek as you're going along. Um, can't think of the name of the place. Not Dettering. Dettering? Not we went Dettering. past Dettering, didn't we? Yeah. You go oh, over no. the creek and then follow that road along, and you end up uh, at Estale. And right. uh, and then you ride into Mitter from Estale. But that whole road along there is just. Yeah, and it was actually in pretty good nick. Yeah, it was in pretty it good was, nick. Which is unusual. For yeah. Any part couple of, of lumps and bumps, but. Yeah, but. Yeah, and you sort of. Yeah, one thing I said to you on the way, the, the difference between coming just coming back from New Zealand and and here oh, is yeah, you, New Zealand you you you're relaxed and having fun while you're riding. Here you're actually really concentrating and and uh, yeah, you have to concentrate because yeah. you never know when there's going to be a freaking crater in front of you. Yeah, so that that's that's the difference. So mm. my advice in, in the whole area up there is take your time, uh, don't go nuts because you can come a gutter pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Uh, however, yeah, head across the Mitter Pub. The Mitter Pub is just one of the best pubs going and, and around. The publican there on the day, Ripper I, bloke. I don't know who he was. He was top bloke, wasn't he? Ripper bloke. He was a really good bloke. So um, he, he looked after us, and yep. we got outside in the massive beer garden, which yep. looks down onto the river. It's, yep. just, it's, it's just a lovely, lovely pub. And, and, and you wouldn't believe it from looking at it from the front. No, no, it? it's it's like it a bloody looks, Tardis. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a little. Little weatherboard pub at the yeah. on the outside. You walk yeah. inside, so holy shit! Yeah. Where did this come yeah. from? Like you know, stuck. There's a gun. <laughs> so it's really good, and you can just walk down the to, to the middle river down the back of the pub, and you know, put your feet in the water. There's people swimming there. Um, it's just a great spot. Just a and, and the food yeah. is spot it's on. Food spot on. Food spot on. But if you're up that way, you've got to you've got to put in a trip to the middle pub. Yeah. So the trip from Bright into Middle and back is probably. Two hours, two, 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 two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, something like yeah. that. There's, there's, you want, Each way. You want to stop along the way, because yeah. and, and, and it is pretty twisty. But I liked when we left there, mate, because yep. when we left, we left by the River Road. Again, yeah. Uh, and that was nice. How nice uh, was that? That was really nice, because you had a cool breeze coming off yep. it. There was no traffic. And the river's and, up. And the river was up, so, yeah, it was very picturesque. Yeah. So just, just, a, just yeah. So and I, Hoggy was running, leading that Yeah, ride. yeah, Hoggy. Yeah. Uh, we have mate Dave Hogg up there. Doesn't ride so bad for an old fart. Does <laughs> hey? Just had a birthday, happy birthday, Oggy. Yep. And uh, yeah, he, he he led on his uh, heritage. Yes, heritage. On his heritage soft tail. The, the, uh, the quietest motorcycle. The quietest motorcycle of this side of bloody. The Great Divide. Johnny, Vesp- yeah, yeah. Uh, Johnny Aqua's house. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's a quiet. No, actually, it's even quieter than Phil's bike, and that's saying something. Yeah. Because Phil's yeah. is quiet. Yeah, it's a, but. Uh, yeah, it might be quiet, but it goes all right, mate. Yeah, no, so, it went, uh, went really well. That, that was fun. Then we went back to his place because he he's got an, he's got an old uh, Norton there, which we had a look at, and he's a Triumph he's doing up. We were just looking at all his toys. He's got a lot of toys. Yeah, so that, that was got a lot of toys. Uh, always good, good fun uh, turning up there, and it was uh, yeah. By that stage, it was like about geez, what three o'clock or something. Yeah, it was and it was hot. Again. It was, getting it was hot. Again. So uh, and then we ended up going. Going back, having a bit of a uh, siesta, and then up to Harrietville. Up to Harrietville pub for tea. 
some of the another some of the great other, pub. Another lot went back to the concerts. Yep. It was too bloody hot for that for me. I went, we went to the pub. Yep. Hagel was the pub. Again, and, and it's always there's always really nice. You know, there's lots of other bikers there, so there's plenty of people to chat to at Harrietville. That's just bef- Harrietville's about uh, 17 k's out of Bright. Yep. Towards Mount uh, Beauty. Uh, uh, no, sorry, Mount, Mount Hotham. Mount yeah, Hotham. towards Mount Hotham. So just be, as you leave Harrietville, that's when you start going yeah. up Mount Hotham. Yeah. So that was that was a good night, and then, interestingly enough, on the way back, I led the ride on the way back. And yes. the reason I led the ride on the way back is because I wanted to test out my new hog light. Yep. <laughs> oh, well, on the phone to Nate earlier tonight, I said, "Holy shit, I couldn't." I, and I'm, I'm, I'll do a video on it, but... Uh, well, what's happened is Hoggy, yeah. who was in front of you in his car, yep. he's had to go to the optometrist because <laughs> he's got... He's well, got, he's, I, got, he's got the mate, same problem. a kilometre and a half ahead. No, no, he's got damaged retinas. <laughs> the same as what happens when you weld. Well, it was funny because I was, I was following. I knew he was ahead, but he was, as I said, he was a, a good kilometre ahead. I could see. So I put my high beam on because I don't. At that time of night, I want to see the kangaroos. And <laughs> the good thing about the hog light is it was lighting up 20, 20, 30 feet each side of the road as well as. As far as I could friggin' see, yep. and all I could see was these little tail lights tapping all the time, you know. And I, I, was, I was speaking to Hoggy the next day, and he goes, "Whitey," he says, "Didn't you get me?" Hit? I said, "What are you talking about?" He says, "I'm tapping me. I was trying to get you to turn your headlight off." He says, "You were friggin' blinding me." Yeah. <laughs> I said, "Well, mate, I felt. I, I swear to God, I feel as, as confident now riding at night with that light as I do during the day. And prior to that, I can tell you." Yeah. Riding it at night wasn't fun because, like, you only could see from here to the camera away. Yeah, uh, it, it, it is. The difference is literally night and day. Yep. So uh, well, I'm pleased as punch with my hog light, mate. And uh, thanks to hog lights again and, for sponsoring us. Yeah. Now, <laughs> that's not just because. Oh, no, exactly. Mate, that, I mean, I, it was undeniable. It, like, was it was undeniable, and, and it was funny because I was looking on Facebook and and. Uh, Chris Trevina, a mate of mine, he's recently put one on, and at the same time he put up a post saying, oh, obviously it's unbelievable. Yep. Um, I know Reg and Mandy up um, Rubber Limit. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they both got them and very happy. So, and, yeah. and, and, uh, how, Reg and Mandy, how, come, <laughs> they just done another trip with Tassie. Well, they did Tassie, got off the boat and rode straight, straight to freaking brighter days. Like, eh? Holy Toledo. Eh? So they, don't, they don't mind doing a little bit of uh, riding, mate, do they? Yeah, no, not at all. Eh? So if, you, if you're up in that area, guys, uh, well, even if you're not there for brighter days, mm. um, there's some great rides to do. Like, do Mount Buffalo, for sure. Got to do Mount Buffalo. Head across Tawonga Gap and across to Midder. That's, a, that's another beautiful How ride. How much fun is the Tawonga Gap? It's a ripper. And it's still... I, I don't think it was in quite as good a nick this year as last no. year, but it's not in, it's not in shit, Nick. No. It's, it's actually pretty good. So we, I did it twice. Yep. So I did it that day, and I also did it when we left. Me, yep. and, me and the tail going left. So uh, it's very, very picturesque, and there's yeah. a, there's a beautiful view when you get to the top, looking looking out over yeah. Mount Beauty. It's yeah. just spectacular. Yeah, we enjoy. It. We, well, we stopped there and took some photos, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. So that, that was yeah. That, 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 that's a good ride to do. Um, the other one you can do is up over Hotham. Hotham into Dinner Plain, Dinner Plain, Drop Dinner Plain, Omeo, Omeo to uh, yeah. Uh, no, you think I'm talking the other way? You get to Blue Duck into. Oh, you could say you're going back the other way, which is that road's not on. as flash. It's a yeah. bit rougher, but it's still plenty doable. And then yeah. you go into Mid. That's that's a good road to do. Um, I know you did the Mount, the the, um, the Falls Creek road, which yeah. is another great road. Yeah. Uh, you can stop along the way at. Um, Bogong Village is really, really pretty. Yep. Wadi will just uh, will explain more about that that route a bit later. But um, there's so many places to go there. Um, that it's just one of the great regions um, in Australia, really, for, for motorcycles. Not even motorcycles, just for anybody. It's just, oh, it's just look, a beautiful there's spot. There's so many places there you can go and visit. And, and all, you know, all the little towns, they're magnificent. Yep. So, you know, there's no reason to sit at home. Very, very European. Like, it looks very mm. European. Like, the, the, yeah, a lot of the trees are deciduous. Now, talk about time to go. Hey, hey Captain freaking uh, horticultural here. <laughs> no, they're very deciduous. <laughs> so, this uh, coming up shortly when it hits autumn is the time to go up there. Like, it, the, oh, the yeah. leaves change so colour. Riding in bright. My God, yeah, it is spectacular. And the, and the actual best place to go 
is a little place called Stanley, which is another great ride. You go from Myrtleford across to Beechworth, and Stanley's in the middle. And Stanley is where they have all the apple trees, pear trees, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, the colours in there, they, they get tourist buses from all over the place coming there to, to take the photos. It is absolutely uh, mind-blowing, the colours that are there. Beautiful, beautiful. It's, it's known, it's, I think it's one of the top well, ten well, places in Australia. Mate, one thing we didn't mention, mm -hmm. and, and it's something we should... Yeah, if you've noticed... We have a special tablecloth on the table. Yes, tonight. this is a, uh, a homma an homage to our one of our flogs. Yep. And if you follow us on the Facebook group, and I know many of you do, we put up a picture that I, I someone took. <laughs> okay. It, that here, was here, taken, it is. here it is. I'll put it uh, up here now. <laughs> so that's our good friend Tracy. Yep. Who was just having a bit of a rest. Unfortunately. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and I saw that and I went, competition time. <laughs> so I took that photo and, and we put it up on the Facebook page. We said, caption this. Well, let me just tell you. Oh, my God. There was a rumor. <laughs> let me just grab it, mate. <gasps> Holy shit. There it is. So here's our picture of uh, Tracy having a bit of a rest. And uh, 76 comments, yeah. mate. Some of you are sick. <laughs> I just want to know. Some of you are sick. Uh, oh, I can't even read that one. <laughs> now, that's what I call pole dancing, was yep. one. Yep. Uh, it started its life at Bunnings, and someone put a picture of the uh, a 2.4 metre. <laughs> <laughs> just nasty, just nasty. I know Harley riders, Harley riders like big things beneath, between their legs, but that's next level. Yep. Uh, but um, the winner, the we, we 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 said that the winner would get a free patch sent out to them. And uh, for those who don't know, we now have embroidered patches for your jacket or for your bag or for whatever you want to do. Uh, and uh, I, I just couldn't believe it when I read. It. Mate. Was it a patch and a t-shirt or just a patch? No, it was just a patch. Just a patch. Don't go giving away everything, mate. Jeez. Freaking hell. Tired ass. Who do you think we are? Tired ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer was... Oh, yeah. Oh, this one was uh, when Whitey says all you have to do is log in to Hogs, Gogs and Tours and Vlogs. <laughs> that's not what he meant. <laughs> but the winner... Drum roll, please. The winner was... I've got to find his name. David... Dens, D E W N E S, David Dens. <laughs> I, just, I read this, so it's perfect. It said, Admin, please remove this post. <laughs> so, uh, Dean, shoot, I'll shoot you a message, mate, in uh, in Messenger, and uh, you'll just give us your address, mate, and we'll, we'll get send off, it out to you. We'll get some uh, merch out to you, mate. You know what? We'll chuck in a. Uh, We're chucking in a stubby holder, yeah, too. Yeah. Oh, my. God. Yeah, we'll chuck that in as well. Things have gone mad. Yeah, it's gone crazy. It's, it's gone, gone crazy. crazy here at Hog HQ. <laughs> Hog HQ. So, uh, yeah, and uh, thanks to Tracy too, because she's a good sport, mate. She she, got, she copped it a bit on the weekend. But, <laughs> but she, she, she is a great sport, and uh, we're, a, we're a great. Actually, I was out riding with her yesterday down at the, um, what's the name, of the Black Dog Ride, yep. and, uh, which I'll have a chat about later, and uh, she came along, and uh, we, had, we had a good old day. So it was good. Great so stuff. That's that's that, mate. So that's brighter days. Now, Whitey. Yeah. I'm not saying this to you. That's just ridiculous. What? But, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> Do it. I need a route. <laughs> <sighs> well, it's up to me to give you a route, mate. Are you ready for it, yeah, fella? Yeah. Where's that log? <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, we're just talking about it actually. So my route for this uh, route for this week. Or well, this fortnight is the road. So when we left Bright, you guys all went home because you're all soft. And me and the tailgate. Some of us have to work. So we left. <laughs> work? What is that filthy word? It's right when you're old and decrepit <laughs> and you're retired. And happy. Uh, <laughs> so uh, basically, we left uh, Bright, headed towards uh, Harrietville, but turned off on the Tawonga Gap. Yep. Did the Tawonga Gap again, mate. Absolutely no traffic on it. It was fantastic. Where That was actually more fun the second time <laughs> around this year. Enjoyed that. Uh, down into Mount Beauty. And then from Mount Beauty, you go straight through Mount Beauty and you head towards... Um, False Creek. False Creek. Well, mate, 
I've never ridden that road before. Yeah, I've been up route. there a lot, but I've never ridden it. And yep. my God, twisties. Yep. Twisties? Holy shit. Hey, it was a bag of twisties, mate, I'm <laughs> telling you. I don't reckon you could go in the entire trip all the way up to the top. Uh, I don't reckon you go more than about 100 metres without a corner. And that's that's when you're having a break. Yeah. You know, because most of the corners are corner after corner after corner. And it's like for two hours straight. Yeah. Even when you get up the top on dinner plane, yep. it's still twisty and windy around. The, and I've got to tell you, mate, I've got a, got a little bit of a uh, little bit of scare where up on the, you know, coming down off uh, the, uh, the, the high plains there, and I see this stick in front of us on the road, and I thought, <laughs> I better not hit that stick. But as I got closer to the it stick... It was a wriggly it, stick. It was a wriggly yeah. stick, and it got closer to the middle of the road, and it was about... No, shit, it was a good, you know... Foot and a half. 10, 13 <laughs> feet long, about that big. And I reckon I missed its head by about a centimetre. Um, I don't know, only my dry cleaner knows how much fun that was. That was... I'm not a fan. Heights and snakes, keep them. Not good. Not good, not good with either. Not good with either. It was a big bugger, actually. Yep. It was. But that whole road, it's very technical. It's a lot more technical than, say, the Mount Hoffman Road. Mm. Yeah. You know, I thought Mount Hoffman was pretty good, but it's a lot more technical because it's just... Hoffman's left, got more right, sweepers. Right, left, left, yeah. right, you know. And, uh, yeah, Hoffman is more sweepers, yeah, whereas this is more tight. It's very much second, out. third gear tops. Well, mate, by the time we got to Painesville that night, uh, holy crap. I sat on the bed. I said, I'm just going to sit down for five minutes. <laughs> I was knackered. Yeah, yeah. It is a top better. If you get up there, don't leave late because it does take a good... I mean, from there to Omeo, so from, uh, say, Mount Beauty to Omeo took a good two and a half hours, I think. Yep. And the reason we went that route is because Paul's been telling us about this famous Blue Duck Inn for years. <laughs> and uh, the tail gunner, she's been wanting to go there since the first conversation. It is a great spot. Yeah, well, apparently it is, mate. It's got a beautiful pub. Yep. Beautiful river. Great setting. Yeah, great setting. Lovely set, good car park. Yep. And a big fucking clothes <laughs> Not open on Mondays or Tuesdays. <laughs> Could you please update your website? You... No, Wednesday. It was Wednesday you went there. I went Wednesday. Yes. Well, why wasn't it open? No, it's it's open Monday. It, no, 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 I went, no, I went Tuesday, same day no, you Wednesday. left. Oh, there was. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think I was going yeah. to see on. No, you're right. Or any more seen on. Yep. Um, yeah, we went Tuesday and then Wednesday we came yep. up. So we did that. We dropped down in Omeo. We stopped at the Mad Cow, yep. which is a, a bakery slash restaurant there for yep. lunch, which is a, a, always a good spot to stop at Omeo, mate. Um, good food, good pies. Um, I know you've been there a couple hundred times. <laughs> and then we slipped down to Painesville via Bruven. Yep. And... Uh, that's just a great. That was just a great day out. I think we left at about. I don't know. We left. You left at nine. I think we left at a, probably ten because we we met with Hershey, who yep. who owns the place that we stay in up there, and had had a coffee. And I think we didn't get to Painesville till about four thirty or something, mate. But uh, I was knackered. That road, as I said, if you can, you want to do the, do a technical ride with lots of twisties. The Falls Creek Road. It's a cracker. A, look, it's not in as good a nick as it should be. Well, that but was, it's not. That, it's not. It's not ratchet either. That road was closed for a long time. There's a yeah. big. There was a big um, landslide there. Yeah, there's a couple of spots where they're actually, you know, they've got traffic lights and you're going down to one lane on the right hand side because they're fixing all that yep. at the moment. So there's two spots along the way that you have to do that. But yeah, if you're in Victoria and you're doing the high country, and a lot of people come down from New South Wales, especially to do the high country. Yep. And uh, yeah, rip, rip a ride. Really enjoyed it. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for for that one, mate. Yep. Enjoyed it. So that's there. You go. I've given you a good route. That's a good route. Yeah, that's a good route. Now, something I want to ask you about. You uh, you took this to New Zealand as well. Mm. The uh, your bag that my, you used the rick rack bag. Rick rack bag. Oh, it's the best thing I've ever received for my motorcycle, mate. Yep. Uh, Rick Rack uh, contacted me a, a while back, and if you want to see a full review of the Rick Rack bag, it's on. It, it, I'll we'll put a, a link in the show yep. notes to the, to the video me and Lee did. Mate, absolutely fantastic. Yep, it is just, and we'll do a little bit of a demo in a second, and we'll uh, we'll put that on. 
uh, of, and a lot of you would have seen it. I know Danny uses one. Yep. And a lot of you know Johnny Aqua's got one yes. as well. And I've seen, I've known, I've known of these things for a while, mate. And yeah, basically it's a suitcase with a rack underneath it with wheels, so you can and you can pull the handle out and roll it about. But it just sits on the rack, drops down, clamps on, bang. They say it takes you about 15 seconds to put it on your bike. Now, if you're anything like me, you've spent your whole life strapping bike bloody bags yep. down. <coughs> Mate, it just makes life so much easier. It really does. And the fact that it opens up like a suitcase when you get to wherever you're going, you can roll it into a... Uh, it also extends up too. And it extends up. It's got plenty of room. Yep. The only, the only negative I could even think of putting on it is that when you're using it as um, not carry-on luggage, um, checked luggage, Check luggage on the plane, you know they're not the they're not the most gentle people in the world at some of the airports, <laughs> mate. So what I did with my rack underneath where the mechanism is for tightening, I tied all that, I, I wrapped that up in in electrical tape yep. just to protect it. And, uh, yeah, it went through his uh, checked luggage on the plane over to New Zealand, mate, and back. No damage whatsoever. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I love it, mate. I've, I just I can't recommend it enough. I'll put a link in to the, to the Rick Rack, and I'll, as I said, I'll put a link into that video I did. But, you know, it's just one of those things. Luggage can be can be great. I've got other bags. I've got my Kiriak in yep. a bag. I've, got, I've had gear sack bags all my life, all that sort of but nothing comes even close. And it's got shitloads of room. The only problem with having that much room... Is putting stuff in it. Yeah, she, t- it. she tends to fill it. <laughs> and I don't mean when we leave, I mean while we're away. Yep. She says, oh, we won't need to put much in the rip wrap bag. And I know what that is. That's code for I'm going to spend a lot <laughs> on, <laughs> on crap while we're away. So you go away with a half-empty bloody bag and you come back with a full one, mate. But that's all right. It's, look... Yeah, it, for well, me, for product review of that one, I can't recommend enough. Look, they're not cheap. Yep. They are quite expensive to get to Australia by the time. And that's, look, a lot of it isn't the bag. It's the it's the, the, the Australian dollar yeah. and, the, and the freight is very expensive. Um, I know you can just buy the rack and you can basically put any bag you want on it. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. And the, ba- the rack itself is only like 200 bucks uh, or 180 bucks American or something. Yep. So... If you wanted to save some money, that'd be the way to go about it. Yep. But to me, it's the ultimate luggage solution if you've got our type of bike. Well, let's whack on the bike and have a look. All right. So here's the actual bag, as you can see. It's freaking fairly big. And there's the rack underneath. All right. So you'll see there's also another zip here, which opens it up, and it actually extends it up to about this high. So there's actually shitloads of room in this bag. Um, you see it's got the, the wheels on the bottom and all you have to do is open this little flap here and there you go. So there's nothing more convenient than that but until you decide to put it on the actual bike, well, it's this easy. It just slides onto that one there, drops down, do it up. Bob's your uncle, she's done. You'll see here there's also a thing, so there's a, a uh, lock that goes through there to lock it onto your bike. So it's simply a matter of putting that through there, you're done. That's locked onto your bike, that's all it takes. Taking it off just as easy. Get rid of the uh, lock. Put that away where it belongs. And do these two. And you're up and away. Now, if it's an easier way of doing it than that, let me know. Because uh, it don't get any easier than that. Last time I saw Lisa, that was on a beer table. So what do you think, mate? I think it's fantastic. Oh, mate, it's... Uh, yeah, you got to get yourself one, mate. There, uh, it, it really just... When you get to a spot at the end of the night, when you're knackered at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is go through all the bloody rigmarole and drag it off, and then you know you open them up and 
sometimes they're hard, hard to bloody load. Yeah. With that, it's just like a suitcase. And, and what I do like about it is you can just drag it along with the with the wheels. Yeah. That's the best part. Yeah, yeah. especially if you're going into a hotel yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, so no, enjoy it rather than lugging a bloody yeah. big, big gear sack or something. Up or downstairs like we did in New Zealand a few yeah. times. Oh, yeah. How much fun was that? Every time. Don't talk to me about stairs in New Zealand, mate. After I ran that bloody hill, <laughs> it did ag me for a bloody week. So that's it. Um, merchandise. Mm-hmm. Just I, I mentioned it before. We've got the stickers now. Stubby holders. Yep. Patches. Patches. Cups. T-shirts. T-shirts. That's it. Is there anything else, please? If there's something else you reckon we should get, stick it in the show notes. I know someone said beanies. Yeah, beanies. And uh, singlets. Well, I don't think there's any difference. We, we, we can get a singlet made up. Or wind sheeters. Wind sheeters. Hoodies. Hoodies. We don't have any updates from New South Wales, Queensland or Tassie this episode. Everybody's been really busy. I spoke to Matt from uh, Gnarly Harley yesterday, so he's uh, he's been flat out, so he's going to have something for his next episode, and I know Leanne will too, so, and I'll just have to ring Big Bert and tell him to get his bum in the gear. Yep. I think we've got some stuff there anyway, so cool. it's all good. Um, Black Dog Run, mate. Review of the Black Dog Run. Everybody, there was plenty of, uh, on Sunday, there was pl- plenty of rides out there. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you did the Black Dog Run. I did the one again out of Seaford, which ran from Scotty's Garage. And it left there when we rode for about an hour and a bit to, uh, I think it was Lee and Gaffer, and we ended up at the Grand Ridge Brewery, up at, uh, on the Grand Ridge Road. Yep. Absolutely. What a pub. That's a ripper pub, mate. Yep. If you're, if you're heading down uh, that way, it's at Merbu North. Yes. And a uh, lovely bit of riding through there. They, they took a really nice back road, which was which I hadn't been on before, and I went, eh, I'm going to have to remember this one. This one's pretty cool. Uh, a good way to get the back way up through, and ended up at Merbu North at the... Uh, Why do likes going the back way? He's a sick man. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the Black Dog Run, as we all know, that's all for men's mental health. I think it was, I don't know, 20 bucks a ride or 15 bucks a pillion or something like that. And it was, yeah, yeah, it was it was well run. As I said, look, look, there's always one or two on those rides, but there's nothing you can do about that. You just keep an eye around yourself. Uh, 99.9% of the people on the ride rode really well. Um, they did a, re- and the one thing they did do, which I really liked, mate, but they did a good safety Think talk before, it, safety before brief. it, and they said, hey, it's a cherry ride. Yep. Pull your head in. Um, so that was pretty good. So no, enjoyed that, mate. Tracy came with us on on her bike, um, on her fat bob. No street bob. No, street bob, yes, yep. on her street bob. We had, a, we had a great old time, and then when we left there, we came from Merbu North. We went the back way and dropped down into Trafalgar. Mm-hmm. Now that's a lovely little bit of road. It is a good bit of road. Well, yeah, actually, that's a lovely a, that whole area there's nice. Yeah, yeah. That, so, that yeah, Grand Ridge Road's a good and road. And that's all within you know, an hour and a half of Melbourne. <laughs> Yep. So enjoyed that, mate. So the Black Dog Run, if you if you haven't done one before, you should. I think we had about 150 on the ride. So to have 150 bikes on a ride, a two and a half hour ride, and have no real incidents mm-hmm. on it. And I tell you what, that Grand Ridge Brewery, mate, we got there, and I reckon within 10 minutes, the first person was already eating. Yeah, that's, so that's they, good. They were switched on, and the, and the meals there, whoa. Oh. Very nice. Uh, oh, mate, you should have seen the steak. Uh, Eamon was there. Yep. And uh, Eamon, Eamon, you know, healthiest bloody YouTuber on the planet. <laughs> mate, he had a, I, I don't know, he had, he had a side of cow yep. on about a, uh, you know, a, a bag of spuds. Yep. <laughs> Massive meal. So uh, he was here with uh, Henry and, and, and a, a couple of others. And yep. it was a, yeah, we had, we had a good old time there, mate. Had a good laugh and a catch up. And, uh, yeah, I recommend it. Next year, if you uh, see the adverts for the Black Dog Run, just get, get along. onto one. I mean, it's a great cause. Everybody's there for the right intention. Yep. What more can you do? Now, good. I've got a grumble. Sorry, just a moment. There is a tradition here. Ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands at home, because there's no one in the audience... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to grumble. Now, my grumble goes back to the bright, brighter days whole set up there. Mm. Now, I've heard whispers and rumblings mm. that the council up there 
the Alpine Shire, mm -hmm. doesn't want brighter days there anymore. I, mate, I, I heard the same grumble. Yep. And I was very concerned. So I actually sent a, a email or a text to the Brighter Days Committee. Where there's smoke, there's fire. There may be. But they said to me, and I quote, uh, although the council hasn't delivered on everything it promised when they m made the move to the new area, which was they were supposed to put more water in yep. and more power, which they haven't done yet, yep. they said apart from that, this, this comes up every year, which is... You mean a council hasn't delivered on promises? I know. Shock horror, mate. Who'd have funk it? <laughs> but they've had time to get rainbow flags up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to get it's the rainbow gonna, flag up. You're not going to get all transphobic on me. No, 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 no. The lesbian gay males are not going to no, be happy with you, No, mate. I've got no issue with that at all. No, got no I issue. might have to ring Greta. I just think... I might Greta, have to ring Greta. Greta thumbnail. Yeah. I just think that... Uh, Local councils especially Should stick in your fucking lane. <laughs> Rain, Rubbish, roads, roads and recreational and reserves. Recreational reserves. <laughs> For Christ's sake, just do that. Would you just do well, that? How, how could you be against having a festival that brings like five or 6,000 people to your area for four days... And, and spends big. I mean, look, I know some of the old farts that have moved up there and they go, oh, it's, it's, it's our area and we want to... We've come up for a tree change. Well, guess what? You don't own... You own your little block of land. You don't yeah. own the entire bloody mountain district. 100%. And everybody should be able to go up there and enjoy it, even if they are on a excessively noisy Harley Davidson like this bloke. I just... By the way, your bike, way too noisy. I no, just... I, I'm going to have to talk to the EPA. It's getting out, right? I just... Will you shut up? <laughs> I just... Don't talk to me. Thought, where's, where's friggin' Zappa? Oh, Zappa's bike. Mate. Hey, Jesus. You have to actually go... You actually have to have a, a bloody hearing specialist come with you on the yeah. back as a pillion when you you're do. riding near him. No, but all I'm, all I'm saying is this, right? Look, like, you know, these people, you know, they, they, they get up in about, you know, we don't want motorbikes near, you know, well, we want just... You know. It's like the people that buy a house in St Kilda, mate, and go, oh, there's prostitutes. Yeah, and people Shit, that buy, no. buy houses next to pubs and they complain about the music, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, guys, yeah. chill. Because, <laughs> you know what, the next thing they might ban might be something you like, yeah. right? Butt out. Yes. That's my grumble. Well, mate, that's uh, that's a, it's, it's a it's a fair grumble, but uh, the Brighter Days Foundation assure me that they're not going anywhere next year. No, the, yeah, yeah. That's as far as it went. Yeah. All right. So that's as much as I can tell you, mate. Yeah. But but hey, all credit to them, mate. They uh, I, I sent them a text and they uh, sent me a reply back relatively quickly, which was good. This isn't a slight on the Brighter Days Committee, by no, the way. No, they, they, no, 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 no I've got no issue they, with them. They do a great job. Yeah, but, it, but like, this is, this is, I've heard it from a few people now that, yeah. the, that the Alpine show... Well, is, actually, the other thing I said to them, I said, next year I will want to get someone from the, the Brighter Days Foundation on, on the show. So, and they said, yeah, not a problem, give us a call. So yep. I'll give them a call early next year and before Brighter Days next year we'll get, get them on. We might get Dundo on or someone like that, yep. which would be, be really good. So there we go, mate. All right. Well, uh, hold on, the last thing we've got... Uh, no, no, we need something there. We need something where? We, we, we need that. We, oh. we need a route. Well, we do need a route, and... Uh, we need well, I mean, of... I gave Paul a route tonight, <laughs> so it's about time one of you flogs gave me a good route. So, uh, if you have a good route, and I actually had someone who was supposed to send me one this week... Mr. Gorgonzola, and uh, <laughs> that hasn't arrived yet. So uh, just uh, as a bit of a... Incentive. Incentive. Anyone that sends us a decent route uh, can will send you a free stubby holder and a sticker or a cup and a now, sticker. Now, what we require, we don't just... I don't want you to just send a thing. So if you go here and you go... Yeah. Map it. Map it. Take a photo of the map and send it to us. With and you know, a couple of spots to stop along the way, yeah. um, put a little bit of effort into it, a little bit it. of effort into it, you know, we'd, and we'll we'll feature it on the show, and, and we'll uh, feature you, yeah, and we'll send you out some merch. Yep, yeah, that'll be good fun, mate. Yeah. So, uh, please, we can only go to so many places, it'd be and quite frankly, we just want to basically suck your brains out and uh, yeah. get some new, new, decent spots for us to go and see. Because, yep. as I said, like. On that uh, Black Dog ride on Sunday, I went on some roads I'd never been on before. Up at Brighter Days, I did the Falls Creek Road. I hadn't done that before. There's nothing more enjoyable, mate, than going on those new, new, interesting roads that you haven't ridden before. Yep. And that doesn't have to be just in Victoria, by the way. 
anywhere. Anywhere. In Australia or New Zealand. Well, well I mentioned New Zealand. Tasmania. Mate. Yes, you can send us your map of Tassie. Yes. Um, New Zealand? New Zealand. We've had a heap of people join the show from New Zealand since March. Welcome because aboard, yeah. fellow Kiwi people over Kiwi there. Kiwi flogs. Yeah, Kiwi flogs. We yeah. uh, we love your country. We love you guys. Oh, we're coming and back. We're coming back. And you know, and again, thanks for coming on board. We really appreciate it. The, the, our stats went through the roof. with mate, the, what uh, happens at last week's show? The last fortnight show was massive, mate. It was. It was great. I think it's, it's pushing about 8,000 views or something. So... Uh, that was brilliant, yep. and uh, and I think that shows how much interest there is in New in, Zealand in in going across the what is it the, the Dutch. Dutch that's it the, the Dutch. Dutch so uh, that's a long way to go for flush and chops that's, <laughs> that's a long ride <laughs> <laughs> and it costs six hundred and sixty six dollars yeah. yeah I know very funny they've heard it all before. Uh, <laughs> They put their sheep down for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, nah, thanks. Only joking. Only joking, yeah. Only yeah. serious. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's it, mate. So that was fantastic. Yep. Uh, lovely to see them coming on board. And we met a heap of them over there too, you know. We're, there's nothing that's not so when someone comes up and says, oh, g'day, guys, we watch the yeah, show. Yeah, that's fantastic. Because, uh, yeah, it just... I mean, someone's watching. We're not just sitting here talking shit to each other, but, <laughs> which helps. Um, Victoria rallies, runs and events. It's winding down. Yes, getting a bit quieter. So, but very importantly, this Sunday there is the uh, Sod Motorcycle Club's Motorcycle Show and Shine, which is basically the relaunch of the Kernot Food and Wine Store, which is down in uh, Kernot, Victoria, uh, thousand seventy five lock. Kernot Road. Now, I mentioned it last time, uh, this is a place where bikers used to meet regularly. Uh, that's dropped off. They've got new owners, new young owners who are keen as much to get people back, to get the bikes back. They love the bike community. Uh, so they're having a day there this Sunday. There's going to be uh, a band, mm-hmm. there's going to be a show and shine, bikes only, which is good. And there's going to be plenty of food. Uh, Blue Dog Cruiser is going to be there playing, all free of charge. Um, we're running a ride, leaving. Uh, so from ten o'clock, we're meeting at Turidan at the Pelican Cafe, which is just on the left hand side as you go over the bridge into Turidan. It's only about a 50, 55 minute ride out to Kernot from yep. there. But if any of you flogs want to come along and ride with us, come down. Uh, we'll be, as I said, I'll be, I'll be there from about quarter to ten, and we'll be leaving at ten thirty on the dot. Um, it's going to be a great trip. You've got to support these places yeah. that want to support. I don't whinge that someone's not supporting the bike in, in the bike community if you're you as a bike community aren't going to get up and support them in return. Hundred percent. So I'm inviting every flog to come down this Sunday. Yep. All right, and it's going to be a ripper day. Uh, as I said, it's from Turin. It's going to take about an hour to get there. It's a it's a it's a piss easy ride, quite frankly, and uh, going to be an absolute ripper day. Yep. So there, if if you don't can't make it to Turin, there are actually four feeder rides. So if you go onto the SOD uh, website uh, Facebook group, so uh, SOD Mosog Club. Yep. Uh, and I'll put a link to them down in the show notes. Um, there's, there's actually four feeder rides. So there's one from the western suburbs. There's one from ours from Turidan. There's one from the eastern suburbs as well. And there's one other one. So if you can't look, you can't yeah. make it. Just just head straight down there. Isn't yeah, it? or just head straight down there. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, a, as I said, a ripper day. There'll be shitloads of bikes. Um, weather's looking okay at this stage. It's not going to be you know too hot, but it's not going to be bloody freezing either, and hopefully no rain. So yeah, that's Sunday, 24th for March. Uh, also, Geelong Harley Davidson on I'm trying to see what date this is. Sorry, I've got it here on the 24th of March. Also, this Sunday, if you can't make it to Kernot, they've got uh, Geelong Harley Davidson All Bike Day. Is at uh, where are they meeting? Bikes only together with oh, so that's at the. Uh, Ballarat Drag Racing Club. Yep. So if you're into drag racing, uh, just go to Facebook and type in Ballarat Drag Racing Club and you'll see all the details there for that. As I said, we'll put the uh, flyers up. Easter this Easter weekend, anyone who's interested, there's a uh, Shannon's Classic Bikes at Broadford. 
So it's classic bike racing. Yep. I've been there before, mate. I saw young Tommy uh, Bramich. Used to, oh, mate, he tears it up there. So uh, that's a all weekend, so you can camp down there and everything. So yep. that'll be a good one. And then the last one, uh, which is not in this fortnight, but it's coming up and we want everybody to know about it, is the uh, 6th and 7th of April is up at Rutherglen, the Rutherglen Rumble, mate. We're Great already weekend. booked in. We've got our accommodation booked. Anyone that wants to come for a ride with us, we're leaving on Friday. Yes. Coming home Sunday. Yes. Maybe Monday. We'll see how we go. Yep. Uh, but the Rubber Glen Rumble is a car, bike, and truck show. Yep. Great bike show there, mate. They have the whole uh, pavilion yep. set up for the bikes, and then there's overflow of that too. That's what we go to see. Yeah. And talk, talk about supporting supporting people that support the bike no community. No one supports more than better than caffeine machine, yep. mate. Yep. So so get along there. Yeah. So that's that's a good one. So if you. You're thinking of somewhere you want to go, you want to spend the weekend, now's the time to get get some accommodation up there, though. Yep. There's plenty of accommodation within, you know, 10 k's of rubber glue. Yeah, and plenty to do up there. Yeah, and plenty to do. So that's that's another highlight of the year, mate. Really looking forward to that. That's the weekend after Easter. Yep. And uh, That's about it. Mate, that's about it. Well, well, that's it from me. That's it from me. And that's it from Hogs. Cogs. And two Aussie flogs. Ciao. I did it again. I don't, I don't like you doing it again. <laughs> It's the only thing I do, Paul. <laughs> no.